Hello again, everybody. It's Plyboy Plyboy's Ghost Channel. Today I've got you looking down with me out of the frame for the most part to show you what I'm up to here lately. I have people that will leave me comments when I do something, you know, like show the uh, the single action army clone, the Cimarron Frontier that that I prematurely aged, you know, kind of antiqued or whatever. And they uh, would like for me to explain some of the things, show how I do some of these things. And okay, so here's what I'm doing now. This this is done, so I can't do much else with it. I have, if um, y'all probably remember, I have a bunch of Oklahoma leather stuff got from Buffalo Arms and Old South uh, Trading down here near Birmingham, Alabama. And I like it that this stuff is functional. I've got holsters here that I've had for years, and some of them I have wore. They ain't no telling how many hundreds and hundreds of times, and I have no problem with them. And... You know, they are, for the most part, they are a little bit lighter colored. This one from the factory was actually just a little darker than some of these others. But they're mostly a little bit lighter colored, kind of like the backside of this belt. And there was nothing wrong with that. But I get bored sometimes and I trade guns, and sometimes I get bored and I do stuff like this. So what I, what I decided to do yesterday was take those, and this was this wasn't Oklahoma leather. This is another brand. Uh, I don't even know who made this. This came with that Ruger Vaquero that I showed y'all. That Bisley five and a half inch. I tightened up this this Latigo stitching, and and this was really light. And I went over it, and you know I let it be just a little reddish, a little lighter in spots, a little darker in some spots. I like that look. And like with this one right here. You know, you can tell right in here about what color it was. It's kind of a more of a reddish mahogany look. I need to get the in edge there, a little bit of the inside. And yeah, that holster I wear a whole lot. Did that uh, black powder belt too that I've been wearing for years and years and years and years. So you see, I took and uh, did my cartridge belt. I even went over this holster that um, I had made for me and you know, I, I, when I, I ran out of the uh, Feebing's light brown, this is what I'm going over that factory color with, is the light brown Feebing's alcohol-based leather dye. And put, I got old Subway restaurant table here that I was given, and I, and I really like that, and it's, it's come in handy for some videos, but I don't want to get it all colored up right now. So Yesterday, I took every cartridge out of this to do the front side and the loops and whatever and to do uh, this holster and behind the belt, uh, behind the holster on the belt. Today, I'm going to do the other side and I'm just going to slip it out of the way because it's just a lot of trouble to take all of that out. So, let's get to it. I'm going to show you a little bit of what I'm doing. In this Alabama heat, 220% humidity and very very high 90s it really don't take long at all for this stuff to dry i've been setting it out on a, a metal floor trailer that i haul the tractor on and just letting it dry in the sun it might take 10 minutes i don't know if i've left anything out there that long so uh leather dye will dye your skin pretty good let me get another sip of beer it'll dye your skin pretty good so I'm going to keep that out of the way, and I'm going to uh, protect my hands here. Well, can't get in it, so it's over with. Show's over. Here's all I'm doing. I shook it up pretty good a few times. Just going over it, and get the thread, too. I, you know, I'm sure that uh, some of the leather makers would be like, ah, oh, don't do that. You know, you could do better, or, you know, whatever, but, y'all... This makes me happy. It don't cost me nothing really. This this leather dye, I don't think was $7 for this bottle at my local feed and seed store, farm supply store. And for that amount of money, anything that, that I can do that, that uh, makes me feel as good as this does, I feel better about something that I already have and I've had for years, it's worth it. I feel, yeah, I'm fine with that. Watch me dump that bottle out here just in a minute all over the place and y'all get to see me make a real mess. Try to get the edges. This backside absorbs it pretty good but because you know it's a little rougher. But like I said, I'm not trying to get it perfect. It don't have to be a uniform color. As a matter of fact, to me, it looks a little bit better. 
if it's not completely uniform. And y'all don't take it as a, a sign that I have anything less than respect for some of my fellow YouTubers who also are leather makers that I've bought all this Oklahoma leather stuff over the years. You know, some of it I bought before I even knew some of those people who were making leather. And a lot of time, well, you know, I ain't got a lot of money, so I can't, uh, I can't afford to, to be too picky and choosy. Some of them make some really nice stuff, and, you know, if I can give $35, $40, some of these holsters I give $20-something dollars for when I got them, you know, years ago, and they're still working. I can live with that. But now, I do like having nicer stuff, and some of my fellow YouTubers that are in this genre of uh, frontier style guns and stuff that make leather do a fine job. See, I'm leaving it a little bit une uneven, a little unequal as far as the color goes. And I like it like that because that little, you know, darker splotches in it and lighter splotches in it. I don't know. To me, it just looks better. Like a, almost like a little bit of a marbled kind of antique look to it. And if you leave it on a shiny, whatever this belt buckle was, maybe nickel, hell, I don't know. If you leave it on that for very long, I'll tell you right now, it will absolutely turn it colored, but it'll come right back with a little bit of steel wool. But I left it just a little bit tarnish looking, a little bit uh, tannish looking. Now what I'll do here in a few minutes is I'll lay that out in the sun for about 10 15 minutes but i'm of the opinion it's probably not going to take that long and y'all i do a lot of this on on my stuff too i will modify some of this oklahoma leather like to i put a stitch in here to keep that from pulling out when you draw the gun so it, it didn't pull out of this hey whatever it takes that was a probably a less than 35 dollar holster when i bought it hell it might have been a 25 30 dollar holster when i bought it so if i have to modify it a little that don't hurt my feelings at all. It enabled, saving a dollar here and there enabled me to do other things that meant a little bit more to me too. Like I said, I have nothing against having nicer leather. I just don't have a lot of it. And there ain't nothing wrong with this Don Hume Oklahoma leather stuff. Like I said, I've been toting some of this stuff for many years, frequently, regularly, and and you know, and sometimes less than ideal situations that I carry in. And uh, you know, like sitting in, sitting down and having your leather rubbing up against seats and tractor, three-wheeler, whatever, and this stuff's lasting. So far, I have not retired a single holster from Oklahoma leather due to being wore out. Or for any other reason, for that matter. I've had to give one or two with a gun trade because somebody wanted it when they saw the holster. They wanted it so much that was part of their, part of the deal for them. I said, all right, sure, you know, I can get me another one pretty cheap. But it was there. They wanted it. They got it. Go ahead and I give it a little bit here on the inside too so that, so that you can see it when... You know, anybody looks down in it when you got the gun drawn or when they just see the holster, it just looks a little better to to have it the same, have it darker on the inside too. And it don't seem to add no time to the to the uh to the drying process for me. Like I said, there's it's out in the sun, it'll have some reddish look to a lot of it. Yeah, I could get the back of this too, couldn't I? Don't take long, but well, the back of this really soaks that stuff up. And y'all, I can't, I don't, I hope y'all can see what I'm doing on camera. I don't normally do stuff like this up close, little projects and whatever. And uh, try to keep everything in frame while I'm working and talking so you don't think I've just gone to sleep or passed out or something. I don't, I hardly ever pass out. And I'll let that ride for a little while and see what it looks like and if it needs any more in any spot. I like, 
I like the look. When you, like I said, when you get it out in the sunlight, you'll see reds in it. There'll be a couple of spots that are almost black and some lighter browns and whatever too. And I'm sure the camera's not doing it justice in here in this carport lighting. Is that, uh, does that make a relatively inexpensive holster? And I'm not gonna say cheap because cheap denotes that it's inferior quality. And I'm sure that somebody will say, oh, it sure ain't as good as Brand X or Maker X. Well, I'm, hey, I, I got you, man. If I spend a lot on something too, I don't want to be told that, you know, something somebody give 35, 30 bucks for is just as good. And it may not be, hell it might be. But I'll tell you right now, if it don't let me down for years and I've toted it regularly, then I feel pretty good about it. And I'm not too inclined to apologize for the brand name if it works. But that's just me. It's like a horse, you know, when you buy a horse, somebody, I used to get, uh, you know, a few little downward looks and whatever. If I had a horse that wasn't, you know, some pure breed or whatever, papered, you know, registered, whatever, you know, you can't ride papers. And there's a, there's a bunch of horses that are that are big name and papered and expensive that ain't necessarily any better than one that's cheap that's just a good horse. And I feel the same way about leather. I can't tell you of any, I can't tell you of any uh, expensive holster makers that make bad products. I really can't. So I got nothing bad to say about any of them. Chow, I had somebody comment one time, not long back, within the last year that it looked like my belt was gonna let me down this is old, this belt I ordered with my very first holster when I started doing these videos, actually before then, before then I ordered that belt. That's just a, that's a, um, a Oklahoma leather, just their black powder belt. That thing has toted almost every, hell it has, it's toted every single belt holster that I've had from revolver to the very few automatics to Single actions to big double actions, it's toted all of them. When I bought that belt, I don't think it was $12. Now you can't beat that. It might be time for me to buy another one. It just might. Well y'all, that's what I got for you today. I, You know, you tell me, does that look better than it did? I think it does. Does that make it high dollar leather? No, it sure don't. But it it gives me a sense of accomplishment. I feel like I did something, like I accomplished something, and I've got something I like better. And I had someone at Walmart today when I wore this rig right here. And I was walking out of Walmart with, uh, with beer. <laughs> I had a gentleman stop me and ask me, he said, uh, do you mind if I ask you, where you what brand of your leather is and where you got it? And I told him, and he complimented that holster left and right. And I... <laughs> I, you know, I not not that I didn't get any compliments on it in the past, but you know that I had some, uh, I had some scratches and you know this that and the other and marks on it and whatever, and when I when I went ahead and dyed that, y'all you know, that kind of rejuvenated it, renewed it, made it look like it was something newer. But anyway, y'all, this is what I got for you today. I've got a couple more uh, black powder holsters over here. These are the earliest ones I bought when I was doing the cap and ball videos and stuff. I toted these on left and right side. These are a little bit darker, but these are a little bit darker from where? Y'all, I have wore them and wore them and wore them. You can see I put stitches here and there to tighten it up for that black powder belt because I didn't want it lifting up on the belt. I do stuff like that. And I made my own little deeper cuts right through here to get it just like I wanted so I could grab some Grab me some trigger guard on the draw. That's the way I draw. On a single action, you don't put, you don't cock a hammer until it's the gun's leveled out, pointed down range anyway. So that's the way I draw the gun. That's the way I'm gonna continue to do it. Y'all, I appreciate you watching. Liking if you like it. Subscribe if you ain't. And uh, leave me a comment. And tell me what you think. Talk to y'all later. Thanks for watching.